OpenAI just dropped some brand new Sora videos and they are absolutely stunning. So we're gonna take a look at those today. Now the OpenAI team went out and got feedback from the creative community, directors, artists, etc., to find out what is good about Sora, what do they need to improve, and how is the creative community going to embrace Sora when it finally comes out. So let's take a look at those videos. All right, the first is Paul Trillo and he is a director. Let's take a look at some of his other work. Look at some of these videos. Very stylized, very cool, very funky. I'm loving it. So here's the video that he created. Let's take a look. Okay, so he posted this two hours ago, made with Sora, the golden record from raw earth material to a time capsule of human life on earth. Using 11 different generations cut together from Sora, I was able to explore what the odyssey of this record might look like. So very, very cool. Next, Shy Kids, a band of filmmakers. Let's take a look at the video that they were able to create with Sora. Well, they say everyone has something unique about them, something that sets them apart. It's just in my case, you know, it's quite obvious what that thing is. I am literally filled with hot air. Yeah, living like this has its challenges. Uh, windy days, for one, are particularly troublesome. Or well, there was a one time my girlfriend insisted I go to the cactus store to get my Uncle Jerry a wedding present. Ugh. What do I love most about my predicament? Ooh, the perspective it gives me, you know, I get to see the world differently. I float above the mundane and the ordinary. I see things a different way from everyone else. Yeah, and I feel like it's because of that perspective I'm reminded every day that life is fragile. We're all just a pinprick away from deflation. So I try to live life with a lightness, a buoyancy, a joie de vivre. I got a lot of ideas keeping this thing full. With any luck, I'll find a way to share them with everyone else. And they say, as great as Sora is at generating things that appear real, what excites us is the ability to make things that are totally surreal. So I think that's going to be a common theme here, where Sora is best at creating things that have never been seen before versus trying to recreate reality. And I'm sure Sora is going to be able to recreate reality very well, but it's also going to be able to create things that maybe we could have never envisioned. Okay, next, another one from Paul Trillo. I believe this is from Paul Trillo. So let's take a look at this video.
Here's another video we're gonna take a look at by Nick Cleverov. And what we're seeing here is absolutely stunning. The amount of detail, the realism around continuity of objects in the video, it is really stunning. Look at some of these scenes, unbelievable. All right, and another one, let's take a look. And here's one that is really fascinating. It kind of almost rubs me the wrong way a little bit. If you have tryptophobia, I suggest not watching this video. So really cool though. People are wearing clothes made out of stained glass, it looks like. Here's an incredible one where they're basically mixing animals together. Here's a bee galloping. Here's a flamingo and a giraffe, a giraffe amingo. Here's flying pigs. Here's a whale and an octopus mixed together, a whale puss, they say. Here's an eel cat. I mean, these look absolutely stunning. Welcome to Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds where we delve into the extraordinary. Episode one unveils the giraffe flamingo, a stunning hybrid that roams the savannah with grace and vibrant hues. In episode two, we ascend with the flying pigs, charming creatures that redefine the skies with their harmonious flight. Episode three plunges us into the depths to discover the whale puss, an elegant blend of whale and octopus ruling the ocean's abyss. Episode 4 introduces us to the eel cat, an aquatic enigma that combines the sleekness of an eel with the curiosity of a cat. Episode 5 presents the bunny armadillo, a delightful mix of bunny charm and armadillo protection, captivating our hearts. Episode 6 features the horsefly, a small yet noble creature that buzzes with a blend of horse-like dignity and fly-like agility. Episode 7 explores the reptilian aru, a creature that leaps across the desert with the vigor of a kangaroo and the resilience of a reptile. Our adventure culminates in Episode 8 with the fox crow, a fusion of fox cunning and crow freedom soaring through the forest enigma. Join us on this mesmerizing journey through Beyond Our Reality, a journey through parallel worlds where the marvels of the unknown beckon. And this last one is by Alex Rebin, who is a sculptor artist and OpenAI's artist in residence, which is a really cool title. I didn't even know they had that. So I don't think Sora is going to be released this year. I can't wait to play around with it though, but I really think they're trying to get their heads around what is possible with Sora. And also, is it going to cause a lot of problems? They seem to be really worried about this. Maybe deep fakes could be an issue. This could be one step closer to a true world model where we're able to predict reality essentially with artificial intelligence. I've also seen a lot of other Sora videos being released over the past few months. And here are a few that just absolutely blew my mind.
So here's the prompt, a supercar driving through city streets at night with heavy rain everywhere, shop from behind the car as it drives. You could see some little issues right here. I think with the shadows, they kind of look odd, but overall it looks incredible. And again, if you could imagine a video game that is being generated in real time as you're playing it, so it'll have to have enough compute power, but Sora could essentially create that for you. The future of video games is really exciting. And this one was published by Tim Brooks. So fly through tour of a museum with many paintings and sculptures and beautiful works of art in all styles. And here's another one, Sean Ralston is the one who posted this POV video of a bee as it dies through a beautiful field of flowers. Now, I wonder what that little white thing is behind it, I don't know. But it still looks amazing. And at UC Berkeley in the Berkeley AI program, which is really who created Sora in partnership with OpenAI, they did a talk just a few weeks ago about how Sora was able to create such stunning results. And so the TLDR is, what made Sora powerful is compute. The emerging simulation capabilities are purely from scale. There are no explicit inductive biases. So think about this. Just a couple weeks ago, I posted a video from Jan LeCun being interviewed on the Lex Friedman podcast, and he talked about how scale wasn't going to be enough to allow large language models to be world simulators. But it seems OpenAI has a very different idea on that point. They're saying, yes, just because of scale, they're able to achieve so such incredible results and if we continue scaling we might actually be able to simulate reality so i've already showed this but just as a reminder of how powerful scaling the architecture underlying sora is look at this on the left side we have the base compute and we're seeing a puppy in the snow but it's basically barely visible what's going on here. Then with four times compute, we have a video that is extremely visible and you could tell what the puppy is, the person in the background, there's definitely a lot of blur that shouldn't be there. But now look at 32X compute. This looks flawless. This is indistinguishable from an actual video of reality. So extremely impressive. Now what would 64 or 128 compute look like? I hope we get to see it soon. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.